All right, how's everybody doing today? Hotep, hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecture, and writer. It is uh, Monday, April 29th, 2019, and I'm here with uh, Ernest Curry of the mm-hmm. Prophet Room, and we're going to talk some about uh, myths and rumors that uh, about the stock market that keep African Americans from investing in the stock market and creating wealth. Okay, how you doing today, Ernest? Hey, I'm doing great, man. How you doing, Michael? Thank oh, you I'm for all right. On the program. Oh, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Man. Well, look, I, I see in the back now. Ernest is a day trader, and uh, he's mm-hmm. the co-founder of the ProfitRoom.com along with uh, Latoya, his partner. You've heard uh, some of their ads on the podcast of our shows, etc. And mm-hmm. just looking at his background, you see charts. I see. Is yeah. that is that uh, Japanese script script in the back? Or is that Chinese? yeah? That's a little- yeah, it's a Japanese script. Just keep me focused about calm, <laughs> love, and just things like that, you know. Okay. Keep, now it's what my mindset right? Now what does that what does that mean? That that script in the back, that Japanese script. What does it, it mean? means it means love. It means like love, like peace, harmony, things okay. like that. So when you're looking at the market, uh, it's very emotional when right. you trade. But you're dealing with money, you're dealing with finance. So right. when I look up there at the script, it's just like no matter what. You're dealing with, with life, work, business. You know, you want to have some form of love, calmness, you want peace. Don't let work take you out of your little zen, your little place, what's really important in life. So that's why I have that up there, you know, just to focus on that, no matter what. You know, it's just money. That's it. <laughs> it's right. just money. You okay. So don't, don't, in life. so don't put money over family, even though, you exactly. know. Exactly. Right. Even though you, you need money to live, but don't put money over family, you know, and, and we're, we're going to jump into this in just a minute. But it's interesting you mentioned that because um, rec- uh, this uh, last couple of weeks, I saw an interview that actor, comedian mm-hmm. Bill Bellamy did with D.L. Hughley on D.L. Hughley's new TV show. Okay. And D.L. Hughley talked about how, um, you know, he was in movies like uh, How to Be a Player and he was doing stand up. He was really big at one point. Right. And he said, people ask him, what happened to your career? You fell off, things like this. He said, I don't think I fell off. He, he took time off to raise his family because he said exactly. that that was more important than pursuing the money, you know, because he's a father, first and foremost. And you, right. you, you, deal, you deal with that sacrifice of um, do I pursue the fame and the fortune or and then have my children end up in prison and on drugs? Or do I am I a father first? You know, so so when you when you uh, have that script in the back that that uh, caused me to think of that. Okay, well look, um, Ernest Curry is a co-founder of the ProfitRoom.com, and they focus mm-hmm. on teaching uh, the stock market, teaching about investing to African Americans, and he specializes in uh, trading, uh, gap swing trading. Uh, daily. He also has a unique ability to find high probability swing trade setups. He focuses on maximizing the best possible entries and exits in each trade. Besides being a full-time active trader with 10 years experience, Ernest is the visionary behind constructing the educational materials of the profit row. All right, so Ernest, uh, first let people know um, how did you get involved in trading? So I have a background of skilled labor. My family always had uh, construction, businesses, real estate. So Mm -hmm. I'm a big real estate guy. Okay. And in late 2008, when the market started turning down, I realized that everything I'm reading, I read every day. I read the paper and I realized that that the market is falling and falling Mm -hmm. and couldn't help but read the paper. You know, you can't help but read the paper. So I got involved with the market around then. I got professionally trained, coached. I was taught by a hedge fund uh, trader. And I was able to go all over the world, China, different countries, to learn about the different financial markets. Hmm. And it just intrigued me because you don't see too many people of our color that actually trade. And now, I mean, we have financial advisors, we have people who can advise, but actually, I like to call trading what I'm doing and what Latoya does, this is like the street smarts, like, 
is right. a difference between advising and understanding and giving the rule of 72 and compounding interest than actually being active as a floor trader, what they do in the market on a daily basis, capitalizing off of movements that affect our economy every single day. So right. once I got the knowledge with that, I just got hooked with it and just started pursuing it even more further in education and learning as much as I can. Okay, excellent, excellent. And what caused you to co-found uh, the Profit Room? So what happened was back in, two, Latoya and I would trade all the time. She's in uh, Boston, I'm here in New Jersey, and okay. trading is very lonely, it's very lonely. And when you get on social media, and you find that other African Americans trade, everybody hits you up. You know, it's like going to right. a, a town or island. You don't see many of us. You you directly connect to them. So what happened? Everybody would post a lot of stuff online about how much money they made and what did they do trading, and it was always like after the fact. Like you know, it's easy for me to analyze and tell you something that happened already. You right. know, then have something live. So what we started to do is start recording our trades live online, Instagram, Facebook. So people would see us get in and out of trades. It was almost like a TV show almost. Okay. But then before you know it, we got a big following and people was like, can you teach us how to trade? Can you show us what to do? And we sat down and over the course of two years before we launched, we started making educational content on the way we would want to learn how to trade. And that's where it went from there. Now we, we have students all over Dubai, Afghanistan, Czech Republic, ev wow. everywhere. We have, them, we have them all over because our strategic approach and what separates us from many is that we will trade with you. Our premium clients, like some people, they want their handheld, which I understand. Like if you're a journeyman, mm -hmm. electrician, plumber, Whatever you do, this is a skill. We will hold your hand through that process one-on-one -on -one so you feel comfortable. And that's what really sets us apart where many educators will just educate you and, you know, grade some tests. Like we do give you homework and stuff, but we will trade with you. We trade every day. Okay. Like we just get off around 1230. We have a group of people we trade with every single day as active day traders. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, and uh, those watching, you can post your comments here on the thread of the broadcast. Uh, and any questions, we'll try to get those answered. How are you doing, Monique, uh, as well? And we just posted also the uh, article that uh, blacknews.com did on Ernest and Latoya, uh, co-founders of The Profit Room. Name of that article is the first black-owned day trading company of its kind is teaching courses on how to profit from the stock market. Okay. And we posted that here on the link as well. So check that out at um, blacknews.com. All right. So what are, uh, you know, when we look at um, what's taking place in the market, we see the market. Uh, the, we see the stock market, especially Dow, Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, is hitting um, records. You know, month after month in general. But at the same time, um, only about fifteen percent of Americans in general are directly invested in the stock market. Okay, uh, you got about fifty, fifty-one percent that are invested through like four hundred one k plans, etc. When it comes to African Americans, we know it's it's. Uh, even less than that in general. Uh, so why do you think that um, African Americans are more risk adverse or less likely to invest in the stock market? Well, I look at a, a lot of aspects and I'm speaking even from myself having a mentor. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's what we see. Okay. Majority of times, like a lot of uh, Wall Street movies, you don't see yeah. a lot of us playing the character. Right. You can name so many except for the one with Will Smith. Right. That's, that's number one. Number two, I believe it has to do, and that's what we help out with trading, a lot of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, being around money and trading money, we may grow up as being humble, right? Uh, individual. I'm a humble individual. But when you come into an atmosphere at, as a trading or investing, you have to put on that superwoman, superman suit 
to have that confidence to believe in what you can do. Okay. Because that's going to help you stick the course because we're all trading based off of emotion. We don't trade off of money. And a second aspect is that you need a lot of money or it's a big gamble from stories that they heard horror stories about the stock market. And right. that's where we come in and show that when you trade or invest in anything, there is a risk. Show you how you can minimize that risk. And that's where the education aspect comes into. Because just because you are inside a trade or invested inside any type of financial institution, there is a cutoff. Mm -hmm. There is a cutoff to prevent you. Capital preservation in anything you do should be the first and foremost. And that's where I believe a lot of us may have heard those stories and think that you're going to lose a lot of your money because right. of somebody that may have been inexperienced or may have been in a situation that totally destroyed their income. Cause we hear these horror stories all the time and we don't, uh, we try to combat that with our education. Okay. All right. Excellent. So, and, and we know like historically, um, African-Americans don't have, it, well, we know that, like coming out of slavery, going into reconstruction, going into uh, Jim Crow segregation, et cetera. We didn't, we didn't have a deep history largely in investing. Now we may have had money in a black owned bank at one time, you know, we had right. probably over a hundred black owned banks, but as far as investing in the actual stock market, things like this, mm -hmm. a lot of us didn't have that background. We didn't have parents who were knowledgeable about the stock market to really teach us about it. Now, we may have had a, a burial insurance uh, policy or something like that, but the stock market was something different. That was something white people did, basically, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, what have uh, been, so so I, so I know you created the, the profit room. Uh, what, what, what year did you all create the profit room? We created the Profit Room in 2016. Okay. That's when we created Profit Room. Okay. And before that, you all were day trading and then... Just trading together. Since, right. Yeah, 2011, 12, and configuring different strategies. And we, mm -hmm. that's where it took us about two years, Michael, to create the content to present okay. it. Okay. Because we wanted to stand out. That's what took so long, to create content and a structure of how we want to do it. Okay. And also you teach people uh, within the profit room. One of the things you teach is about day trading as well. Is that correct? Correct. So day trading is a little more advanced, right? Okay. That's where it requires a lot more capital. Okay. But we have so many other programs. Like I recommend people starting off swing trading. Okay. Now let's talk about that. Trading is say at the comfort of your home, you're able to analyze a company. Mm -hmm. or stock, right? You may get in the trade around a Monday or a Tuesday. And within a week or two, you reach that capital that you're looking for, that anticipated price. Okay. So, so let me give you, let me give you an example. A lot of our students, we want them to do a three to one risk reward, a one to three risk rewards. So for example, if you're risking $50, to make a hundred and fifty dollars mm -hmm. that's where trading comes in this is risk management so i'm gonna throw a number out there say you buy a hundred shares of a ten dollar stock and you don't need to spend this month that's a thousand dollars right that's a thousand dollars of exposed capital ladies and gentlemen remember that exposed capital if that ten dollar stock goes down to $9.50, you want to automatically sell that. So that means you took a loss of $50, right? Because you bought 100 shares. If that stock price goes to $11.50, you sell it, you make $150. So I'm just giving a simple illustration. If you do about three trades like that, 
in one week, you can have at least two of those trades go bad. And one of them, you could still make money. So, Michael, let me just give an example. Okay. Trade number one goes bad. You lose $50. Mm -hmm. Now, you already know your max loss ahead of time. Trade two goes bad. You lose another $50, right? Because we're looking for a one to three risk reward. Okay. Trade three goes right. You make $150 on that trade. So that one trade cancels out the other two losses and you still net a little bit of money besides commissions. You still net a little bit of money. That's called controlled trading. Controlled need, trading. Yeah, that's what we teach. You don't need that amount of capital. You don't need that amount of capital. I just wanted to keep the math simple. Okay. I want to keep the math simple, but this is where a lot of the rumors come in you don't implement something like that, even in your retirement account, sure. short term, long term, that's where we look at it and we teach you how to find a anticipated setup because we only could trade off of probabilities. We don't know what's going to happen, but I'm disciplined enough. If that stock price, like I said, drops to $9 and 50 cents and I have a hundred shares, that's a $50 loss. I want to exit the trade. What's been happening, people will stay in that trade. Mm -hmm. Like the crypto business. The cryptocurrency, yeah. Yeah, they'll just stay. And this is where the emotions come in, Michael. Like, if you find yourself as a trader investor, if a stock price drops, like, say, Apple or Facebook. Right. We hear people say, oh. Apple and Facebook is on sale. I'm going to buy it because it's falling, right? Sure. Then you have the same people that tell you Facebook and Apple is going all the way to the roof. I'm going to buy it because it's going <laughs> higher, right? Right, right. But the, you get what I'm saying? It's a conflict. It's a conflict because there are people telling you to buy it because it's going even higher, and there's people telling you to buy it it because it's going even lower mm -hmm. we come into play and show you to find a strategic way of entering that trade with the right setup right because I, because either way can hurt you exactly it can hurt you because yeah you find at the top right yeah you have to know when to buy when to sell when to enter enter when to exit and this is one of the things that happened because I, I i had uh invested some in bitcoin you know, now I may, I did make a profit with Bitcoin. I don't have any Bitcoin. I think I may have like eight dollars left. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't, I don't keep track of it. And I think I like have eight dollars left. But I, I remember uh, Bitcoin was fluctuating, man, like crazy. Mm -hmm. And I remember it got all the way up to uh, nineteen thousand. I think just shy of twenty thousand. Made it hit twenty thousand for like a second. December last year. November. Yeah, and, and then then it then it fell. Then it fell back down, and then it will fluctuate, what have you. So I was, I, you know, I I was able to I at least double my money. I think you know I did pretty well, and I had a little Litecoin also. But now you don't hear a whole lot about cryptocurrency a lot, especially especially Bitcoin. What happened was after the Bitcoin futures came out. Right. Then and that, that, we, we, yeah, we did a video on that on our yeah. YouTube. About, just to explain now that Bitcoin futures came out, yeah. it's the ability to short and able to capitalize off of both ends. So you got your big, big boys and girls in the hedge funds able to mm -hmm. capitalize as the price goes down. We right. Can clearly see it on the chart. Before it was just really going up. Yeah. Now have fluctuation. And that's what we do a lot. We teach a lot of people how. To, then that's another rumor to capitalize on both sides of the market. There was a lot of millionaires created in 2008. There's a lot of people made money on the downfall of Bitcoin and XRP at the same time. 2018 or 2008? 2008, when the market started turning, seven and eight. Okay, right. Coming down. Okay. Coming down. There was a lot of people shorting the market at that time. Right. Making money as the the stock market comes down right and 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 that's where uh we was talking about just a minute ago like is the stock price going to go up on mm -hmm. the buy when it's down 
you have to understand that happy medium and what many don't understand that's why when you look at these charts i'm not trading money i'm not trading uh i'm trading the emotion i'm trading the emotions of the market mm. because when you look at visual charts like you see the reds you see the greens right. they're showing you the human emotion so many hear about like the bernie madoffs and the scam artists that's all written down in the fundamental aspects which are really good but you can't fake emotion i can see and we teach our students to see when big money is coming in and when okay. big money is coming out and you can see that with the emotion Look at the thing with Boeing. When, when Boeing happened with the planes, right. the, stock, the intrinsic value right. of the company was mm -hmm. still good. The, the P.E. ratio, their balance sheet was amazing, mm -hmm. but the emotion caused it to drop. Just like the fires in California, that, the emotions caused it to drop. And there's a way without exciting news like that, that you right. can find emotions on a daily basis when to get in your favorite stocks and when to exit your favorite stocks like that. That's so, another way to trade. So, so what you're doing is you're looking at the emotions that people have towards a particular stock and you're using that to tell you when to get in and when to get, when to buy and when to sell. Yeah. So candlesticks and technical analysis, we deal with price action. We believe as technical traders, when you look it up, the intrinsic value of the company, whatever okay. is worth, is usually expressed on the chart. It's usually expressed on the chart. And before it happens, before any news happens, it's usually related from previous history and price movement. Like when we look at the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones, there's levels of his, historic levels where prices bounce off of. Right. And higher. Like currently now, we're at all time highs. It's a little bit difficult now, but with certain pattern recognition and certain candlesticks, you can anticipate. And I always want to use that word anticipate certain movements with the proper risk management in order to capitalize off of that. And that's what traders do on a regular basis, whether you're day trading, short term, or if you're a long term investor. That's what we're looking for. Now, fundamentals do come into play, especially when you're dealing with different sectors, you know, healthcare, like the banks are up today. But right. a lot of it has to do with visually seeing how the actual stock price is moving and who, okay. and who is actually moving it. Who, okay. We can't move the market, Mike. We can't move it. Our goal is to find who's actually moving it and just ride the wave with them and ride the wave with them. All right. Uh, now for those just tuning in, uh, this is Michael M. Hotel, uh, founder of the African history network, host of the African history network show. I'm speaking, uh, with Ernest Curry, uh, co-founder of the profit room. And we're talking about, uh, myths and rumors about, uh, investing in the stock market that keep African Americans, uh, from investing. And if you have any questions, you can post them here on the thread of the broadcast also. Uh, now, what do you recommend that uh, people read on a daily basis, especially African-Americans pertaining to investing, uh, the financial markets, et cetera? What, what, what do you uh, encourage them to read? Websites, newsletters, publications? So I would encourage everyone to have at least the CNBC app on their phone. CNBC, at least have right. that. The mm -hmm. app that's free uh there's another website i love investing.com okay and th the fact is you just want to be conscious what's going on sure. there's many trading books that you can read like there's one i like it's called the disciplined trader mm -hmm. but that's more for active traders but if you're new just to the financial environment like when i first started i used to just watch videos on how to read the financial pages and things like that. You know, even on our YouTube channel, The Profit Room, we have some informative information. But just basics, having a CNBC app and not promoting it 
it's gonna let you know what's going on with the price of oil or any type of mergers, things of that nature, even if you don't understand. Even if you don't understand, you're just conscious because a lot of people believe in other currencies, they believe in other investings, but slowly but surely, everything that happens with the market is affecting our lives, no matter what, with our jobs, health insurance, the cost, anything that we're dealing with is related to the market. And if we're just, if we just know what's going on, like we call it trader talk. One of my buddies are called or I get online, did you guys see what this stock did today? Right. Like I trade a lot of futures. My buddy, uh, did you look at uh, live cattle today? Did you look at wheat? Did you look at corn? It's, it's a lot of stuff people don't know. Like even we import a lot of pork from China. We import a lot of wheat from China, right? Right. Uh, the tariffs going on. If you're trying to buy aluminum, aluminum siding, or if you're doing your kitchen over, and you're trying to get granite countertops, you see the price of granite has went up because of all the tariffs, the steel. We get a lot of steel coming from Canada. This this stuff right here, even if you don't trade it, if you just have that information, you'll understand and it makes you more powerful, even just as a, 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 a general African-American person because you're conscious. Right. You're conscious. You don't need money for that. You're just conscious to know what's going on and you see how that affects us all. And that's been new to like since the tariffs that's been going on. Exactly. And it's just been it's been, I've been included. educated. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've been educating myself even more, and that's why I'm more of in the futures market. I'm trading a lot of oil now, I'm trading a lot of wheat, things of that nature. That's helping me advance financially because these markets I never really thought about before but they're in my face now and as a trader I'm able to capitalize and I'm able to show our students that as well because many people haven't uh, been exposed to a lot of these markets but since we're in it we want to show as many people as possible absolutely all right now Malik asked the question how do I get in contact with this gentleman he's currently trading on Robin Hood um, how, how can people get in contact with you, Ernest? So if you go to the profitroom.com okay. backslash wealth building, under wealth building, you'll see our phone number to our company there, or you can send us an email for a consultation. And we also have like a little webinar right there as well. Yeah, Robinhood is a, a, a good place to start um, if you want to start out. And, re and remember, I just want everybody to realize with sure. trading and investing, this is education. This is education. And in order to achieve mastery and get it, try to put the monetary aspect out of it. This is just like any other profession. Okay. Like with our students, our average courses run about six, seven weeks. Okay. They get homework. We, we meet with them weekly one-on-ones. But they have to prove themselves to us, Michael. They have to do at least eight positive simulated trades, eight okay. positive simulated trades. So if you come to us for education, we're not going to trade with you right away with money. That's our whole goal is risk management. You know, we don't want people to focus on the monetary aspect, even though we make amazing profits if you see our stuff, but you have to treat this like any other type of education. It's you're going to find emotions of yourself that you never knew. You may think you're a, a, a humble person. Then you find out you're greedy. Right. You may think you're greedy, then you find out you're scared, right? But the market is going to tell you who you are as an individual. And that's one of our, that's one of our uh, specialties because we're able to mix a little psychology in there okay. to show you where you're going wrong. Because our students, like, they'll, they'll send us their trades, their simulated trades, or even our advanced students who are on their own. Yeah, I traded today. I kind of messed up. I should have did this. Okay, let's look at where you went wrong. Why did you get in this trade? Okay, where did you take profits at? Why didn't you get out here? And they'll always go, because I thought this. I thought right. that. Right. And with trading, is more of reaction. You have a plan. You stick to it. It doesn't work you get out more thinking right is short term 
it's short term. It's like a fear. Like, but we try to instill in you a long term aspect that you just repeat over and over again. And that's what we tell our students ahead of time. You're going to do a journey. Then, like I like to say, Mike, if you buy one share or a thousand shares, you're going to trade the same way. You're going okay. to trade the same way. And what I mean by that, we get students, it doesn't matter how much capital you have. You can have $300, $400. Some of our students can have 100000 you're going to learn the same way and you right. shouldn't change that because at one point I was only trading with 20 shares, right? 40 right. shares, but you have to build that confidence. You have to build that cycle. Then little by little, before you know it, you're up to a hundred shares. You're up to, you right. Know, it accumulates. You accumulate and that how, that's how you grow. And that becomes confidence that that builds your confidence because you see it actually working. Right. And that's where our thing is. I don't want you to, be, I want you, if I can't explain how I got in the trade, Mike, I don't want you to believe me. I okay. want our students, we explain why we got in and why we got out. Absolutely. Not because it's low and not because it's high. And that's what we, um, that's, that's our whole goal. Because okay. we know that it's such a myth of like it's it's, it's gambling, it's super risky, right. things of that nature. You know, capital preservation is our main thing, especially with our people, because we can't afford to have when we don't use this term, term disposable income. Because right. I'm not going to drive down the road and throw twenty dollars out the window and say, "Yeah, I just eh, it was only twenty. My it's only a hundred. If you bring that mentality to trading, which a lot of people brought to different markets like crypto, and so sure. that that expands from twenty dollars to a hundred to two hundred. It's not only so we don't have disposable income. It pl plants a negative that. seed in your mind, right? Exactly. It plants a negative seed in your mind. All right, now Charles. Uh, so Jolien uh, posted a comment and said, "Thank you." Uh, Charles uh, said, "What uh, what training resources can be?" directed to uh children perhaps games or, or do you have training resources for children to teach them uh this at all or do you have any recommendations for parents that want to teach uh, educate their children on the stock market and trading etc so we're currently putting together a program now and it's more for a ninth to 11th ninth to 12th graders so okay we work, we work with a program out in north new Jersey. Jersey called Founders. So every Wednesday, um, we meet with a group of kids in uh, Newark, New Jersey, uh, and e educate them on stock market and education. Okay. So these are high school students, basically. Correct. High school but students is a nonprofit organization. Sure. We volunteer our time with, and we've been doing a pilot program to see how that is. And okay. we're putting together something digital very soon, hopefully before the summer drops, in order to get something with the kids. But I mean, I mean, for now, I mean, there are certain games out there. I don't know any off of hand. Okay. But uh, it's more of we believe in the instruction aspect. That's why wherever we create or put together, we want it to be visual to instruct because okay. a lot of people can read a book. They can watch a video, but they can't interpret it the same way. Like the way I may be teaching you, Mike, I might be teaching that gentleman some, some way different because the way his mind thinks. Right. You know? So we're trying to come to a happy medium amongst the different teenagers. Now, this is an urban enterprise zone, so we're catering it more to that. So we're trying to get a balance of the two. But for now... Um, I think anything, uh, like even if you go on like Investopedia, right. is a good site. Investopedia, watch some of the videos. But we're trying to put something together for the children now, hopefully in by the summertime. So we already have the content. We just have to create the videos and we'll definitely send and let you guys know when we're okay. together. And some will be here in like 
two months. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's coming up, yeah, because yeah. June, June 20th or 21st starts summer, so two or three months. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, so look out for that. Okay, now, um, African American business owners, you can also post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast and email us at customer service at African History Network.com. Customer service at African History Network.com. We'll, we'll let you know how you can advertise with us. Okay, now Malik had a question. Uh, Malik Judah, he had a question. Uh, he asked, What do you think about Forex? Because I know that's one of the things you educate people about as well. And once again, the Profit Room is a stock market trading and education company okay so they help they have classes to educate you on these different uh fiduciary instruments in the financial markets but what do you think about forex 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 is a great market uh we have a great educator uh, teaching that her name is lydia amazing right. amazing lady and um she's been on cnbc she's been on, she's been on squawk box i mean not squawk box uh, benzinga Forex is the most liquid market out. And the only thing is with Forex, just like anything else, it takes responsibility. A lot of people start with Forex because there's a lot of leverage. Right. They get like a one to 500, sometimes a one to 300 leverage on Forex. I enjoy trading Forex when I get some time and what I focus on about maybe one or two pairs. I trade a lot of Euro USD, and I trade a lot of um, uh, GJ, British pound, Japanese yen. So anytime you're going to get involved with Forex, I would focus on maybe one or two pairs. It's the same aspect. It's all technicals. Hey, explain to people exactly what Forex is. So Forex is the foreign uh currency market so like that's okay. the thing if we go if we go to europe right and um the europe our dollar is a dollar to exchange that it may cost us a dollar 15 in europe your in europe's uh currency so we're exchanging back and forth so the market is always changing back and forth so our dollar versus uh the euro that's the pairs that they have okay and it's just constantly moving up and down now the only thing with the forex market as a trader you have to be up to date with news like what's going on with brexit over there right right um, in the uk yeah yep, the european central bank you have to be up to date on <laughs> economic news that's going on in those exactly and well. political issues the political issues exactly. influence the economics yep exactly so it's a great market a lot of people start because you don't need a lot of capital requirements okay and it's very liquid it's very liquid the markets open almost 24 hours a day but you do need a lot of responsibility with that you do need a lot of responsibility you can make a lot of money with a small amount of capital but like always, I would say get educated, and it's a very technical-based market as well. So that's the only reason why I trade those two pairs, because even though I'm watching the U.S. economic news, I'm only going to focus on Europe and, um, and um, Britain and the Japanese yen. I'm only, I can't focus on every single thing, right. but a lot of the uh, Forex traders, they do very, very well with that. They do very well. So that's a, a great market to, to go in. Okay, excellent. And, and one of the things that you all do at the Profit Room, and you talked about this, is you teach individuals, you teach people how to create generational wealth through trading uh, in the stock market, trading in the financial markets. And that's extremely important. So we can pass on, we can create wealth and pass that on uh, to our children. Okay, so uh, Tyrone asked a question, what about IPOs, initial public offerings, uh, and when a, uh, a company goes public? Is, uh, you know, a lot of times we hear, like, when, uh, when, when Facebook went public, we heard that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the stock, the stock market went through the roof, and uh, Zuckerberg uh, made so many billions of dollars. Uh, we, see, we hear about big companies. Uh, now, I think Lyft... I think it was yep. uh, either or Lyft went public, but their stock, I don't think their stock is doing that great right now. Uh, talk, yeah. talk about that IPOs and, and Lyft and uh, maybe uh, Facebook, any, any of the stocks you want to talk about? So Lyft went uh, public, it IPO'd at 86 
dollars right right they expected it to go to 60 then it dropped all the way down to like in i think the lower 60s mm -hmm. last week zoom zoom went public okay zoom webinar right here and also Pine that's Street. what we're using now zoom okay right. yep <laughs> now they yeah they're beasting they went up you got to mm -hmm. understand with those ipos a lot of institutional investors have gotten in five right. years so now they're profit taking and it's kind of like we're late to the party like for example, when Facebook IPO'd, it was at forty-two dollars. Okay. Right. Then, like, uh, within that year, it dropped to seventeen dollars. Mm -hmm. Somebody bought at forty-two. If you look right. at the chart, it dropped to seventeen. Now it's what two two hundred and two dollars. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. A lot of the stuff what we try to look for when I mentioned earlier, Mike, is controlled trading. Okay. Controlled. A lot of the stuff. There's moves that are trade stocks and companies that are moving every single day that is generating us income where we don't have to chase the hype. We right. have to chase the hype and get in because everybody believes Lyft is a great company to eventually come back up, which is no problem if you're an institutional or long-term investor, same as okay. Zoom. Right. As a technical trader, I mentioned earlier, I like to trade the emotions how it's moving. It's not too much meat on that bone yet for me at this point to see a personality of the company, how it trades, because that has a lot to do with it. And I'm not going to miss the boat because let's we look at trends, just like how Facebook dropped to 17 and it's at 200. As a trader, I can anticipate and visually see how the market's going to move. I may not catch the initial bottom, but I'm going to be able to spot that trend to catch it higher and still get a piece of it. But I'm going to be able to do that over and over again with multiple companies where some people, they get stuck just on one and they have to hold it through the ups and the downs and the ups and the downs Okay. Where we can visually see where to get in and get back in. And that's the thing about trading. Another myth, Mike, you can always get back in the trade. You can always get back in the trade. Right. You make your money. It comes back to a, a good level of technical analysis, like we call support or a historic area. You can always get back in. There's people, we have students that only trade about five companies. That's all they do. They just get in. That's what hedge funds and a lot of companies do. They get right. in, they get out. They get in, they get out. So you don't have to be married to a company. Okay. And one of the things with day trading, one of the things that you teach people in the uh, classes is to is how to make an additional, uh, at least an additional $100 to $200 a day with the uh, live trades. Is that correct? Correct. So there's many markets that you can trade. Like the futures market, you don't need a lot of capital. Okay. Oil, oil moves all the time, especially in the morning and the evening. And you can get 100, 200 bucks easy off that uh, in like 15, 20 minutes, even less. Okay. The same thing with day trading. If you have the capital requirements, you have stocks. Like today, there's a lot of earnings that's going on. A lot of earnings plays. Like Target was moving. You got Baba. Uh, uh, Alibaba, you got Apple, you got Facebook. These companies move two to three dollars a day. Now these are large cap stocks, and they are expensive. But then you also have other companies because of earnings moves a dollar or two a day. So as an individual trader, you can capitalize off of those movements. It's not long term but it's short term. So if you had a hundred shares of a specific company and that stock moved a dollar, you made a hundred dollars like that. If it moved $2, you made 200. Now you sell it. That's a short term trade. And that's what day traders do, but on eventually a bigger level. So a 50 cent move to somebody like me is a lot of money because I may be in the stock with a thousand or two thousand shares. Fifty cents on a thousand shares is five hundred dollars. 
you're going to 2,000 shares, that's 1,000. So that's what I mentioned before. If I'm trading one share or 1,000, I'm trading the same way. The methodology doesn't change. It's just the confidence and the capital when you look at it. And that's the same way with futures. Futures, you don't need a lot of capital. You can be able to day trade with like $2,000. And you're able to capitalize and make two, $300 a day with a, a nice risk management. A nice risk management being very strategic. So that's what we've been teaching a lot of people that on the future side who want to be active. But once again, we do suggest swing trading in the beginning because it, it helps build discipline, especially if you have a nine to five and you work, you don't have to be stuck at the computer. You're able to sit in the evening, find a nice trade set up, place the trade. We call them microwave trades. Hit start. Microwave trade. Yeah. Or you're going to win. So it's like you don't have to be stuck at the screen. Because we get a lot of traders, who maybe truck drivers, shift workers, nurses. And you don't want to be glued to the uh, computer. Like right. this is my profession. That's why I'm here. The average <laughs> person is not going to always do this. They just want to be able to sit at home on a computer, analyze a company and a stock. And say, you know what? I'm going to buy this. This is my price. I'm anticipating it to go up $3. I want to be able to sell and get out the trade. And that's it. And that's our average customer that we get. And some people, after a while, once they build capital, they want to turn into a day trader or they want to advance. And that's how I started. I didn't start off day trading. I, I was swing trading for about a good two, two to three years. And I built up some great capital. And I just wanted to advance and go even more. Okay, excellent. Uh, so let me ask you this question. Uh, when we look at the uh, stock market, we have different we have different markets. We have the Dow Jones Industrial Average, Standard, Standard & Poor's 500. We have the S&P 500. We have NASDAQ. Are there, is there a particular uh, market that you are uh, have more of an affinity to or like? Is it Dow Jones? Is it S&P? Uh, is there a particular one that you have an interest in to teach about? So we teach all markets because we're teaching uh, emotions and strategic movements. Okay. So a lot of people, long-term people, like the Dow because it has the right. Dow 30 in there. You got the McDonald's, the Verizons, the big companies. Mm -hmm. 30, the 30 stocks. Yeah. 30 companies in there, a lot of long term because there are a lot of dividends in there mm -hmm. and a lot of stable companies. Right. We trade a lot of S&P and NASDAQ. So if you look at the NASDAQ, mm -hmm. the heavy hitters are in there. You got Google, you got Apple, you know, you got Baba, you got Tesla. Those, that's why those major companies move that NASDAQ. Then you go to the S&P 500, you know, you got the Macy's, you got some of the retailers in there, and they move pretty good too. So depending on your personal goals, okay. we're going to cater the teaching around you. So if you're a longer term swing trader, we're going to look at trade setups and so you, so you setups that may keep you in the stock for maybe two to three months versus maybe a week or two or three. We're going to have you evaluate and look at companies like that and technicals because there's some stuff that has a lot of volume, right, that, that moves. Like when GE was good or like right. a Microsoft, a lot of those stocks, they don't move that much because yeah. they're heavily instituted. So okay. you're not going to trade that on a daily basis as a trader because you're going to be sitting in it. You're right. They're just steady. They're just steady, reliable. Yeah. But and that they, may be, that may, yeah. That but may they be pay out on the dividends though. They pay out on the dividends. Correct. Mm -hmm. But that may be your fit as a swing trader to say, I want to get in Microsoft, but Microsoft may move $5 and right. move back down $5 because we right. have traders that do that. That's all they do. They buy Microsoft and they wait for it to come back, they buy it again, they sell. They just want to be able to visually see where they can capitalize off of the movements of, rather just than being stagnant. Then okay. there's traders like myself 
that like technology stuff, like Square, then there's MU, which is Micron. A lot of these companies that are in the tech space, Roku, like the TV, Roku, right. they move. They move. And those movements can be very fast. So if you're a younger swing trader, or I don't even want to say younger, more aggressive, you may be more interested in trading companies like that that can get you faster returns. There's a little bit more riskier, right? But sure. you're going to minimize that risk because you're going to know where your cutoff is and you're going to know where your take profit is. And that's what we believe in. We believe in taking profits. You know, there's stocks that run and they continue to go higher and higher. But as a disciplined trader, you always want to book profits because when you book profits, that builds confidence. And the more confidence you have, the better you are as a trader. And that's the cycle repeats because if you never book profits, you can never tell somebody, hey, I made this money in right. the stock market. Right. And that's what we do. We tell all our students, if you make $50 in a trade, take that money out. Mm -hmm. Go buy something with it. Go pay a bill. You know what I'm saying, Mike? That right. brings it real to you. If you made $100, don't leave it in there, even though everybody wants to grow their account. You understand? <laughs> right. But in the beginning, take that out. Take that money out. Look at it. That's mm -hmm. going to build confidence. Right. Pay a bill. Now, you could say that I was able to take money out of the market and pay for something. That's mm -hmm. going to build your confidence so much more. You're going to, you're going to want to learn. You're going to want to learn because now you have a cycle, a cycle of pulling money from the stock market. And that, that's, okay. what we, that's what we try to instill in, in our students, stuff like that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll take a, a people, you can, uh, those watching, you can post your comment, you can post your questions here. Uh, we'll take maybe one or two more questions before we get out of here. But uh, explain to people again, Ernest, what is swing trading? What is that again? So swing trading is like the, the term swing. You mm -hmm. got swing ups and you got mm -hmm. swing down. Okay. So what happens is you are looking for a particular stock at a price where you're looking for a swing to go up if you're look going long. So when you look in the back of, uh, you see my monitors, prices move up, down, up, down, up like that. Right. So as a swing trader, you're looking for a possibility for anticipated movement to the swing high. So you find based off of a, technical analysis or chart pattern, which we teach our students, say you look at a stock and the current price is around uh, $49.75. Okay. And based off of technical analysis, you believe that stock is going to go up to about $52. Now, based off of what we're looking, maybe that target may be reached within a week or two because some stocks are different. Like we talked about Microsoft, Roku, some move a little bit different. So you see that stock is around 40, uh, $49 and maybe 85 cents. You may say, when this stock gets to $50, I'm going to buy it because I anticipate it to swing back high. You go into your computer, whatever your broker is, Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, you place a buy order at $50. If the price is currently $49.87. It hits $50, you're triggered in the trade. You automatically have a sell order at your target, maybe 52. And say you're willing to risk maybe a dollar. You have a stop loss at 49. So you already know. If the stock goes to 52, I'm going to get out the trade with profits. If it goes to 49, I'm going to get out the trade with a, a strategic loss because I'm, 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 I'm accepting the loss. Because if it drops below 49, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Right. And that's what trade. And you hit, like you said, the microwave, you hit start. You can go to work, do what you have to do. 
in the evening, you can monitor the trade because we moved this and that. And when you reach that target, boom, you get out of the trade, the other trade cancels, and you made that profit. So that's a swing. And people can look for swings with a bigger risk reward. Maybe you're risking a $5 move to make a $15 move. Okay. Right? So swing trading depends on short term or can be even long term. And uh, on we have a webinar on that on that link, theprofitroom.com forward slash wealth building. I explain sure. that and Lori explains that even more throughout that whole uh, webinar. But that type of trading builds confidence because now you automatically know your anticipated loss and your anticipated profits. And you just keep re re repeating that cycle over and over again. So if the trade goes bust and it doesn't work out, you could look at the trade and see where you went wrong. And that's okay. where we come in as coaches. After Absolutely. a while, like, did you notice this? Did you notice that? Absolutely. Well, check out their website, theprofitroom.com, theprofitroom.com forward slash wealth building forward slash wealth building. And you have rep webinars, you have videos there that people can watch also yeah. uh, to get more information and they can s sign up for the actual classes where you educate them on the stock market, trading, uh, Forex, the different markets you have, uh, um, the one-on-one -on -one mentorship also. Uh, that, that you talked about as well. Okay, so I mean that's fantastic. Um, do do you are there any conferences that you attend like on an annual basis that deal with this type of information? So what we uh, last year we uh, Latoya was able to speak at a trading summit. I just came back from um, Black Tech in New York. Black but, Tech. Uh, okay. Black Tech or Black Tech conference that was a. a amazing event up there but it's not too many conferences where um a, a lot of the stuff that you see some of the trading and investing like the money shows and right. things of that nature they go a lot into a lot of institutional long-term retirement which is great and, and we plan on having a, a, a summit coming up very soon oh, i think we're scheduling it for next year but we're going to be planning it very soon okay so it's 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 this is more of a niche type stuff like i sure. I, I went and sat with like hedge fund managers and talked to them and a lot of things now where it's more computer based like because we are trading bursts against the computers anyway right so a lot of these summits that you see it's just more strategic actions whether hey, this is why you should be in Forex. This is why you should be in futures, or this is why you should be in stocks. But what we're trying to do is give you a little bit of everything. Okay. We, have, uh, we have instructors and people who do almost everything. And that's the whole thing, because everything is technical-based. That's what we try to push. Okay. Everything is visually and technical-based. So once you master kind of one market, it's like learning the personality of another market. So like you right. know how to drive a car, but then you may not have your CDL to drive a bus, but it's, right. it's going to move the same way. It's just different functions. It's the same exact thing. That's how you can look at the different financial markets. Okay. And now how can people follow you all on social media? So anything uh, at the Profit Room, you'll see our logo. We have that there on Instagram at the Profit Room. Uh, also, Facebook, when you see the profit room, you'll see our little uh, blue logo at the top. Same thing. Okay. Twitter, uh, and also YouTube. You'll notice you'll see a little, we have a little caption sometimes. We don't chat, we trade. Right. We focus on trading versus talk. Right. You know, so. <laughs> All right, we just posted the uh, your social media handles here on the thread of the broadcast also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, it's uh, at The Profit Room, okay? And <laughs> and we posted the link to the YouTube channel here also. All right, well, look, uh, Ernest, it's been great talking to you. We'll have to bring you back on along with uh, LaToya as well. Uh, let me know yeah. when the, uh, the videos come out because, uh, I mean, these are great for children. And then also, if you have those videos for children, I mean, that opens you up to attend um, 
conferences that deal with uh, educating African-American children also. That opens you up. You know, I speak every every the third weekend in July. I'm in Atlanta each year because I'm one of the uh, presenters at the uh, Liberated Minds Black Homeschool and Education Expo. So I'll be there. I'll, I'll be there in uh, July this year. Uh, and that is a, a black homeschooling conference. You have a lot of experts in homeschooling African-American children, those that have schools, you have people with curriculums, all types of people who have books, all types of educational material to educate African-American mm-hmm. children. So that's a that's a pretty nice, it's a two-day conference. Oh, uh, and, and it actually, well, they kick off on Fridays now. So it's really like three days. And uh, okay. so when you have something like that, yeah, okay, I will. I'll send you that information. Yeah, I'm sure I can make that. Yep. Okay, well, look, Ernest, it's been great talking to you, and uh, we'll have you back on again, okay? All right. Thanks a lot, Michael. All right, no, no problem, man. Take care. Have a good day. You too. All right. Okay, everybody. Hey, look, I got to get out of here. Uh, follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. Follow us on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P. And uh, be sure to listen to the African History Network show every Sunday, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation WFDF. We broadcast right here on our Facebook fan page, uh, the African History Network. We put it on our YouTube channel. We take that, uh, the audio podcast, put it, uh, uh, upload it uh, in audio podcast format on our, on eight different podcast platforms as well. So we're on uh, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, CastBox, Uh, FM player Stitcher. Uh, We got back on Stitcher a few months ago. So we're on eight different podcast platforms also. So wherever you get your podcast from, search for the African History Network show. Follow us on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. On Instagram, it's Michael M. Hotep. On Twitter, it is The AHN Show. And also, um, African American business owners say if you want to advertise with the African History Network, email us at customer service at African History Network.com. Customer service at African History Network.com. We'll let you know how you can uh, uh, advertise with us. And also, we take your uh, 30 second and 60 second commercial audio commercial, put into the audio podcast uh, of our shows. And when we do Facebook Live broadcasts also throughout the week. Uh, we can promote your business as well. Okay, so email us at customer service at African History Network.com. And uh, we have a current promotion going on for a few more days. Current promotion is uh, get three months for the price of one. All right, so look, hey, uh, share this broadcast on your Facebook pages. Let your friends know about this also. I have to get out of here. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now, let's correct wrong behavior. Uh, it's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace. <laughs>